Welcome to the third iteration of the Overlay Bar. I'm your host, the Shirt Lad, and uh, this time I'm with Peppa Nick, the one-man combination of Gampla, wrestling, and great banter. Kurt, thank you very, very much for having me on. Okay. Crazy excited to finally be able to sit down and talk with you, dude. It's been uh, I've been looking forward to this ever since you brought it up, and I've wanted to be a part of any type of content that you were putting together, dude. Because you're just such a solid dude. Many thanks, man. So I've eaten my vitamins and jigged my Jones, so without further ado, <laughs> let's get into it. So uh, feel free to do a brief self-introduction if you want to. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm Papa Nick, uh, Pops, Papa Plamo. i got a lot of monikers, right? But the most important thing is, is now that we're all friends, you can just call me Pops. Uh, I've been building Gumpla for about 20 or so years now. Uh, I'm a massive Gundam enthusiast, uh, fighting game enthusiast, wrestling, professional wrestling enthusiast. Uh, and, and, if I, and if I take a notion to like something, I throw myself into it completely. I, I don't just dip my toes into things. I submerge myself completely. Um, I've been creating Gundam content now for about five years, and I've been creating content as a whole, uh, not including music or anything like that, for around 10 and I've been lucky enough to find a group of guys that have taken a liking to my style of content. And I've also been lucky enough to discover people who also enjoy the things that I like to talk about. And the Shirt Lab being one of them. That's neat. Oh, it's more than neat, baby. Yep. <laughs> Just, you know, in my organ when I'm, uh, you know, trying to speak quickly sometimes, uh, sometimes there's that... You know how on mobile phones you got the uh, autocorrect thingy? It just throws me the first word it has in mind. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. dude, I do the same thing. Like, you want to know how you uh, you want to know a good uh, a good little routine? Stand in front of the mirror and start cutting wrestling promos on yourself. And by the time that you've done that for about six months, the words will just fly right out, dude. Like, it don't even got to be the right word. If you say it and you mean it enough. It's okay. We'll just skip right over that one. <laughs> Nobody's going to notice. Yeah, I get it. I mean, uh, I'm uh, not very much into wrestling, but uh, I know a lot of people who do. So, uh, yeah, I've grown it's to re- kind of appreciate the arts over time. Exactly. That, and I, I love the way that you described that, too. The art. It is, it's, it is an art. It is Shakespeare in action. It is so much more than this. Uh, I know how silly some people look at it, and that's understandable too. Don't get me wrong; everything's not for everybody. But when somebody respects it enough to call it an art, right? Like, like, because when it's done well, you're, you're even even a casual observer. When pro wrestling is done properly, you can be like, "Oh no, I get it. Oh no, I see this. I get it. I can. I willingly suspend my disbelief." Because this guy has done such a good job at drawing me in that I cheer for him. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's uh, again, not for everyone to consume on a daily basis. But it is something that I believe that a casual observer can enjoy as long as it's done well. Poor professional wrestling is for people who really like it, right? Like, going back and watching Botchamania every week is great. Because they're just making fun of all the screw ups, and I love that. But the casual observer that would say that would be like, "Why the hell does anybody want to watch this?" <laughs> yeah. Speaking of consuming, I've been watching the Gundam Build series recently, just for the sake of completion. Yeah, uh, gotta say the Super Robot shenanigans weren't really my thing, so I went for a little palate cleanser. So I binged uh, the the Spriggan, Votoms, and. Uh, yeah, even the whole Light Runners thing. All right, right on, right on. Uh, but before the, you, we move on to those things, the the Build Fighter, the the Build series, right? Yeah. What is your favorite run of them? Have you have you completed uh the, the entire run of Build, uh like Build Fighters, Divers, Rerise? Have you completed all of those, or are you still in the midst of getting through them all? Yeah, I haven't watched uh, some of the battle logs, and uh, I think I didn't didn't watch. Build Fighters try, but everything else I've watched, and uh, yeah, I don't really like the Super Robot things where they just pull off the ultimate attack every single fight. It's you know, at least with G Gundam, there is this you know progression while fighting where they actually you know they exchange blows. They uh, 
it kind of, you know, there's some stakes, but in the case of, I don't know, like, divers, it's like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna pull out a giant ass sword that's gonna slash, like, 20 machines at once, and, you know, it just don't feel right. It's a it's a bit overpowered, a bit OP. Yeah, no, I'd definitely pick up what you're laying down there. I think the one thing that makes me enjoy the build series, uh, the, and I don't want to say the only thing, but we'll say the biggest thing that makes me enjoy the build series is just the um, the units, like seeing how the the uh, the combination of different uh, mobile suit or gunpla at this point as being a gunpla builder, seeing those kit bashes come to life is super cool to me. And that's, and that's literally what's drug me through these this series. It's, it's certainly not been the story, uh, even though I did like Rerise. Rerise got me. Um, like I enjoyed the story going through it, but yeah, no, it's it's always been just seeing the units in the in the build series for me. Uh, and I can totally get where you're coming from. It kind of like it's, it's definitely seems like it's made for kids. You know what I mean? To get them into Gumpla, yeah. which is cool. You need that. Don't get me wrong. Um, but for uh for people who have been in the media for a while. Uh, been into the uh, the IP of Gundam for quite some time. I think it's just for us. It's just the visual aesthetic of it, right? Uh, getting to see uh, like try burning Gundam is so cool. Like it's such a cool looking suit. It does kung fu, which is awesome as hell. Um, it, it it looks like burning Gundam, but it's got all kinds of other stuff going on with it. It's super neat, and it's just fun to look at. Not so much fun to digest the story of it, right? Yeah, what got me initially hooked was uh, seeing like stuff from MSV, the you know the drill guy, the egg, the oh, yes. Zaku flipper. That was awesome. And then, then build strike happened, and man, uh, I couldn't believe my eyes. It just did the uh, Kira Yamato uh, stuff, and, and they, they always that's, that was a turn off. I think I think for you and I, I think I, I'm not trying to speak for you or anything like that, but like I feel like it, this is fair to say, uh, Universal Century or Bust, uh, yes. for the most part, it's for it's something part. about how it's, it's. I'm not saying that we can't enjoy Seed or we don't enjoy um, <clears throat> Double O or, or things of that nature. We don't, it's not that we don't enjoy it. It's just that it lacks what the Universal Century has in the form of. Uh, story uh depth to the universe right there's, a, there's been a whole world that's been created inside of it and most importantly above all things else waifus tons of waifus yeah. in the universal century the other ones they just they're, they're not as cool those waifus i mean they might be pretty but they are not as bold <laughs> yep like uh for me it's uh yeah i kind of liked uh stuff from wing double and some other alternative univer universes but then then you got Seed, and I'm kind of split on Seed since, uh, you know, you you kind of see a few of the setups and payoffs, but they're way too disjointed, and uh, it it don't look right. But as for the well, right food... Just... Oh, yeah. Uh, Come on, speak on them, baby. Yeah, I'm saying Resin Schneider, best girl, blue space tomboy, all I need. Dude, I'm not even going to argue with you there at all because best girl for me isn't even a UC girl. It's Rain. Rain is best girl, Ooh, hands nice. down. And but if I had to pick, oh man, if I had to pick a universe, man, dude, it's mm, oh my god, I'm on the spot and I can't think of her name. She pilots the um uh, the the the. the or long black hair. Help me out here, shirt. You totally oh. know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Long black hair, kind of a dominant lady. Okay, uh, that doesn't really Pilots narrow the list. <laughs> it doesn't at all, does it? It's yeah. uh, long black hair. Pilots the red. Um, starts with a G. Oh, I got M Bond oh. brain right now. Hold up, G. Let me think. Man, I have no clue. Ah, uh, it's the uh, Gerbatetra. Gerbatetra, yeah, Shima Garaho from Double Eighty Three. That's it, dude. That is it. That's my girl, dude. I don't know what it is about her, man, but I'm like, yeah. <laughs> man, I approve. She's got that DNA. She's got great taste because Gerbatetra, awesome suit. So cool. Yeah. So freaking cool, dude. Um. 
but the um uh, another thing about the universal century dude is the politics like i don't think it's necessary i don't want to use the word allegory because uh i'm a big tolkien fan and tolkien says allegory is for hacks right even yeah. though i mean come Come on, talking yeah, totally allegory, yeah. but whatever, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Let's we'll, we'll get past it because you're a doctor and I'm not. But uh, the the politics inside of it have been the space politics are kind of similar to the things that have gone on on our planet, and the the the, the way that you can get hooked into a story that way. It, it the, the writers have done such a great job at making sure that it has substance and i feel like that only exists inside of the universal century there could be some seed fanboys or some uh uh well no i i, I would argue that there's not enough of the enough of the media to even stand next to the uc but there could be some seed guys that would argue like no 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 there's politics here too there's great story and depth here same with um uh wing? the 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 wing exactly zex super Super, super cool character as well as the the entire uh, setup for it is. It's almost like it wanted to be UC, right? In my opinion. That's just my take on it. It's almost like it was set up to be damn near identical to UC. Um, and then you have some the, the weird group of guys who absolutely adore Iron-Blooded Orphans. <laughs> and, and, I, and I say that jokingly, but... It, it, it has a lot of depth to it as well, but it's in such a small, compact serving that I, I just have a hard time. I have a hard time looking at it as the same light as, you know, things going from uh, CCA all the way down to what we recently got in Unicorn. And um, even even though it's a it's a it's a throwback to, to uh, you know, Castle Ball's, uh backstory. Uh, Gun of the Origin, which is just a, in itself is an absolute masterpiece in my opinion. Yeah. Like when people ask, "What is your favorite? What's your favorite uh, Gundam series?" And I'm like, it really pains me to have to pick between the two, but I absolutely loved Unicorn. Like if you can get past the La Plaza's box loophole, that, I mean, or plot hole, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's it's the most. In yeah, exactly. I, it's there's there's it, it is kind of strange that. You know, that's been out there all this time, and we're just now looking for it. But once you can get past that, a uh, wonderful story, great OST, right? Yep. And anytime I hear that unicorn theme, dude, the hair on the back of my neck stands up, and I'm just super happy and excited to hear it. <laughs> um, but Gundam The Origin was so good, and I, it was almost, I was almost bummed out that it ended. I was like, oh, man, I wish you could stretch this out for like 60 episodes. It's been so good and great that you, like, I, like I almost wish that they would just go back and redo the entire run, like redo the entire first series of Gundam and flesh it out a bit more, not necessarily as a show to sell toys, but one to sell the show itself and the characters inside of it because they flesh it out so well. And if you don't read the manga, and again, if you read Gundam manga, uh, you, you absolutely know how hard it is to find a fully translated version of some of these, uh, some of these, series that you want to enjoy uh if you don't read the manga like you've not really gotten these fleshed out backstories um yep learning about learning about Casaval was such a cool thing for me personally but i know it would have been like in, in an animated format but i know it would have been so much cooler for someone who had no idea who or what Casaval was watching that for the first time yeah, I can imagine. I mean, speaking of uh, Gundam manga, uh, yeah, I've got a mildly entertaining story with that. So, yeah, once I got the, uh, got a whiff of uh, the origin, I uh, I got hooked on uh, the manga, and uh, yeah, then uh, after reading that, I I was like, I want more, I want more. So I went uh, looking for scanlations, and uh, yeah, I haven't seen uh, uh, MSVR Return of Johnny Ridden at that point. So what I did was that I looked up uh, the publisher, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I've uh, written to them, like it was uh, on uh, on the Japanese book walker, and uh, so I've sent. Uh, an email to the to their international department, 
and uh, the thing is, uh, they told me to go ask uh, in the Japanese branch. So I went to the Google Translator, I dusted it off, I mm. tried <laughs> kind of patchworking, uh, you know, a letter together, and uh, yeah, a few days passed, and uh, all I got was uh, was a reply mail. You are wondering about stuff going international and getting translated. Please go ask the international branch. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> typical. Typical typical in any situation, right? You go stand in one line, they tell you to go stand in the other line. You go to that line, they're like, no, you're supposed to be in that line. But they just kind of pass you back and forth the whole time. Yep. Oh, baby, I know all about this. I know all about this. One of the, one of the cool things that I've... Uh, that the one of the cool resources that we have is Zionic, right? It's the one that I've used uh, for the longest time. Yep. I recently got turned on to, to uh, the 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 ones that uh, I believe it was you that turned me on to this, right? The uh, oh man, I've got it saved in my in my, in my uh, uh, links for me to go and be able to read these manga. Um, but the uh, um, Zionic has always been where I would go to try to find anything. This It's definitely been my go-to place for Moon Gundam, and because I, I adore Moon Gundam. The, 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 the units from Moon Gundam have been some of my favorites. Uh, to, to look at the, the, the uh, is it the Daughtress system? I believe it, or is it the Sister system? Daughtress? Anyway, uh, what makes them look like bugs? I've got no clue about the Daughtress. It's, if I recall correctly, as the mass-produced uh, GM stand in uh, in Gundam X. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, so it's like I just went uh, just the other day. I went and uh, checked out Ziana because I always just pop in, see what's going on, see if they're ever going to get around to translating Mobile Suit Side Stories uh, or the Missing Link or anything like that. That's probably never going to happen. But I think I'm like the only. Uh, I feel like I'm the only person on the planet that's like, do this, do this already. Um, you know, 30 years after the fact. But then we recently got uh, our hands on uh, Moon Gundam Volume 8. It's just great that there's these people out there that love it enough and want to share it with us as well. I really do wish that some more things would go international, like you're, like from the uh, direct translations. But if th th there's such a love for the IP that exists globally that fans will, will will make sure that fans can enjoy it and that's pretty cool uh and it's similar to it's i i draw a lot of one of the, the one of my favorite sayings is once you understand it fully you'll see it in everything and the love of gundam is similar to that of professional wrestling where it is niche and the fans will do everything that they can to make sure other fans get an opportunity to uh to enjoy it um by making sure that they're 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 translating the uh the, the what's going on in uh New Japan Pro Wrestling. They'll translate everything out and that way you can digest it. New Japan does a pretty good job of making sure that they translate things as well because they understand their reach. Awesome. But it's it's something about like the fan involvement, the the community behind the all Gundam that makes it so special. And there's subsects of all those communities as well. Like we have the the gaming side of it where uh, there's a lot of guys that I know that aren't interested in Maxi Boost, for instance, right? They're not interested in uh, uh, building Gunpla, but they're interested in one or the other, uh, you know? And it's like these little subsects. And then you got guys like you and me who are just fiends for this stuff that uh, love everything that comes out of the of the IP. We, we love the manga. We love the shows. We love the gangs. We want to get our hands on every single piece of this uh, media and digest it and uh, pick it apart and truly enjoy it. And I feel that there are more people like that for Gundam than any other community that I've ever dabbled in. Yeah, that's possible. I mean, uh, yeah, I did uh, notice such a... Uh... Uh, the stuff you mentioned uh, when I was looking for English patches for stuff like Giran's Greed and uh, and Gundam Assault Survive and other mm -hmm. such things. Uh, what caught me off guard the most was that sometimes they even uh, translate some uh, games that are like really big that would uh, you know that would uh, devour literally hundreds of hours like. 
fucking overworld. Like, damn. Like, the whole roster, save for uh, the MS descri descriptions, like, literally everything translated. Yeah, I love it. I love it. You have to love it. Like, and especially if you're working on something like that, right? You have to love it to throw yourself into it because it's got to take hours and hours and hours. And we appreciate it so much. Like, there's guys that out here that that translate things and, and and give it to us to be able to enjoy, especially like like a, a, a patch for um, a, a patch for an emulated game, right? There's no money in that. There's there's no there's there's nothing in that whatsoever except for the love that the community gives back, and we appreciate it so much. People who are able to throw that time into a project to literally get nothing back but a thank you from the community. And sometimes I feel like uh, that they don't get the the love that they deserve back. Like, well, like we should be showering these people with affection, but we kind of take it for granted now at this point um, that eventually we will get the opportunity to enjoy this in our language of choosing. But we shouldn't. We should absolutely appreciate the people that put the time, the effort in, because it is a lot, dude. It's it's so much. You're, you're basically some people work on these things on. Uh, eight hours a day that's a that's a full-time job like they go to work and then they come home and they sink their time into their passion uh to make sure that you and i can enjoy it and i think that's so cool i think it's so selfless as well to do it uh to do it for no monetary gain whatsoever i, I think that's I, I appreciate that shit so much because i understand what it's like to want to share what you love with everybody especially with the other people that love it and that's what got me started on the on the giant chart um, I've got in the works, sometimes on the back burner, but always in the works. Because I, like I looked around and uh, there wasn't uh, any any English wiki for uh, Gundam Assault Survive to speak of, so... Oh. What I did was, uh, yeah, I went to the Japanese wiki for it and uh, I kind of... I kind of began translating some of the unlock requirements for the, uh, for uh, for mobile suits, parts, and maps. The the stats overall, yeah, I got them from uh, from the emulated game, and uh, yeah, I'm slowly making my way through various charts. So, Gundam Assault Survive that has a massive, massive character roster as well, right? Yep. 310 units. Holy shit, I did not know it was 310 units. Dude. Damn. That is awesome. And there's absolutely so there's been there's no uh there's no English support for. It. This is the PSP game, correct? Yep. I mean there's uh there's an English patch that uh, translates oh, okay. uh I think just n the names of a few a few things like uh I think on the research tree, there's uh, stuff that's translated, some part names, and uh, there's like five or so mission names and mo mobile suit names as well that also get translated. But you know, and this is a game that came out, you know, 12, 13 years ago. See, so, uh, and it just looks uh freaking wonderful damn this is something that i want to try now uh, i just i just went and i looked into it and of course i see right off the bat one of my favorite units of all time blue destiny unit one aka the big dong unit uh anytime i see that i'm interested i'm in oh dude and they got the ball oh dude yeah you know shirt lad there's something that i gotta tell you man balls do not get enough love in our community <laughs> And uh, the, the RB79 ball is so damn cool, but we do not give it enough love, dude. Release the balls. That's all I'm saying, brother. Hey, man, uh, you gotta try that game. You know, it lets you, like, when you're playing as a ball, you can call additional balls as assists. If you're playing, you're trying uh, to tell as me that you can have, mo yeah, you have multiple you balls, can. two balls on one screen, you can have 11 balls. You can have, I don't know, fucking 20 if uh, you're using the ball K type and you start a super ability which just conjures fucking clouds of balls to shove in your opponent's just face. Shooting. Yeah. Yep. Man, I love the balls in that game. 
Not hey, to I love mention the, balls the in Desert Zaku. Ball game. You know, in this game, the Desert Zaku just, uh, you know, it pops out the sand skis whenever, it, whenever it's on the sand and just cruises around and yeah, that's just pure dopamine. Whenever you but just bumping right through my veins, dude, just dope yep. me watching it. I, You're just scooting along the sand at uh, breakneck paces that, uh, you know, would have given me motion sickness if I just went and maxed out the speed. Oh, oh God, man. dude. There's certain things like, like I've, um, it's just wrong games. Uh, well, right before I go in to ask you this question, man, a game that I've always wanted to play and I absolutely can't is uh, Ace the Ace Fighter series. Anytime that I try to play that game, I'm like, I oh, can't do it, dude. <laughs> Every time I play it, I get motion sick. And I'm like, Ace Combat, excuse me, Ace Combat. And my friends are like, dude, you got to play this game. And I'm like, I can't. Every time I go to play it, it's like I'm on a boat or something like that, dude. It's just, it ends up tearing my stomach all two pieces. I get dizzy. I'm like, how do you guys play this game? And they're like, because we're men and you're a boy. <laughs> just go play boy games. That's what irked me out from the... How was it called? Encounters in Space, right? Yes. Yeah, I absolutely despise the way the controls are handled. It's, it's just, you know, it kind of reminds me of those, uh, you know, fighter plane games on the old arcade cabinets. But imagine that, but on acid. And it's just yeah, playing right? <laughs> around and, you know, and you can't really properly control a flying blur. It's so just, what you know are there any other games that you uh are there any other games that 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 you play outside of Gundam games? Yeah, quite a lot, but uh like you're like the genre of game that you absolutely that that this is if this comes out I'm playing this. Like RPG shooters, fighting games, uh like, what which of those like you know, it's a very small, you know, uh, the grasp of it, but like which games are your go-to? Well, that's a tricky question, since uh, I usually have uh, quite a few favorites in each genre. Like, mm -hmm. for example, in uh, in the arcade games, I absolutely love stuff like Bro Force and uh, you know stuff uh, and other such pixel games. I like the the shooters such as uh, you know the older Far Cry games, Doom. The reboot of Doom. Yeah, if you don't love the reboot of Doom, dude, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then there's like uh, the real time strategies. I love the uh, Red Alert ones, like the Command and Conquer Red Alert Free. I know it's cool. the black Classic. ship of the the series that people prefer the second game, but you know. That's I my just, favorite version of the game as well, just so we're clear. That's my favorite version as well, so too sweet, yep. my friend. That is that good, good taste. Those people who call it the Black Sheep, you're wrong. You're wrong. Go back and play that. <laughs> yeah. Really enjoy it. Yeah, and the 40k Dawn of War, it just, you know, it lets me do exactly the thing I loved to do in uh, Red Alert 3, but instead of uh, the Soviets, I just pick uh, the Tau, and I go like... Let's mass produce this ship and let's kill or rush the enemy base, and it somehow there you go. works. Exactly, baby. My um, uh, my go-to games have always been. Well, don't get me wrong. I enjoy uh, some RPGs and things of that nature as well. Um, I, I really, really like uh, uh, like boyfriend simulators. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but I, like, it's, I've always been a fighting game guy. Like, fighting games have always been my go-to uh, uh, genre. If anything comes out. In, in in 2D plane, I've got to have it. Um, even if I know that I'm... Each time that a game comes out, I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to grind this and I'm going to be the best in the world at it, right? And that very rarely happens. Like I very rarely find one that I'm going to grind out. But the beautiful thing about a 2D plane is, is once you understand it, understand what the... The, the the limitations and the, ad, the, the advantages that you have on it, you can kind of transfer that over to any 2D plane game. Um, then you just got to find out how does this game play? But for me, it's always been my, my favorite game of all time is uh, Street Fighter 2. That's my absolute favorite game ever. Um, and it, Street Fighter as a whole is my favorite series of all time. I love the lore. I love the characters. I love the gameplay. 
uh you know i even liked street fighter 5 when it was just stealing my money right uh <laughs> they finally made that a decent game but it was uh i, I would even defend street fighter 5 when it's was not worth defending to a lot of people. Oh, you mean the um, uh, eight frames edition? Yeah, yeah, the eight frame edition. That's the best edition. What are you talking about? <laughs> man? Like, there's so much to love there. Um, it's something about the way that uh, th those games they did so much uh, history involved in them, um, and th that's one of the main reasons that I play on uh, an arcade stick. There's no advantages for me playing on an arcade stick. In fact, there's several disadvantages. Of course, you know, on, on your right hand, uh, your button hand, there's some advantages to how quickly you can, you know, slap a button as opposed to reaching for a trigger or moving your thumb up to hit triangle or whatever. Um, but it's the legacy that comes along with it. It's keeping something like that alive. It's a little piece of uh, uh, something that you hold in reverence almost because, you know, playing fighting games are akin to playing piano. And it's a uh, the, the, there's a lot of skill that goes into just learning what to do with your hands, let alone what to do with your brain. And that's, you know, when I was a kid, it was just mash, 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 punch, 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 mash. Whoever throws the most punches wins, right? That's got to be how this game works. And uh, you see, you start understanding the complexity of it, especially when you see top top level players who are just parrying every little thing and, uh, you know, wrecking into every little thing. And it's it, it becomes so cool to watch at that point. Like when you're watching, when you're watching two scrubs go at it, sure. I mean, like it, it's still fun. Don't get me wrong. But when you're watching two top tier uh, competitors go at, go at it in like, like, like Street Fighter 4, for instance, it's, it's something that you can hardly turn your head away from. And it's, uh, it's, it's always been... Yeah. Yes, exactly. You're like, wow, because you have a little bit of an idea of how this works, but you, you have no idea how they're doing what they're doing, right? Um, and it just takes, it's such a grind to get good at those games. And when you understand that, you kind of, you know, you, 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 even more reverence is thrown into what you got going on. Uh, yeah, man. The, I, I can the, relate. I played piano and, uh, you know, that's why. That's why I'm very bad with controllers. I just get the muscle memory, and uh, you know it. It just don't feel right. So yeah, that's why I'm uh, considering uh, getting a uh, fight, uh, fight uh, stick uh, yeah. <laughs> to Listen. play my stuff with. I'm so happy that you said that. All right, I'm so happy that you said that because over the course of the past two years, my friend, I have engrossed myself in sticks. I have so many. sticks. Sticks. That's a that's a that's a dick joke. But at the same time, I have <laughs> I, I have so it's it's such a cool community, and it's such a cool community. Like there's like no so like you you know uh, playing online games so you can get like a, a little bit of toxicity in a game, and a little bit of toxicity is not that bad. It's not a bad thing to experience at all. Yeah. It kind of makes it kind of, if you're anything like me, it fires you up to get better at it, right? Um. But in the in, in the fight stick community, it's just a bunch of dudes helping a bunch of dudes make something cool, and getting one that's pre-made and it's got you know your good Sanwa parts in it and everything like that. That's great. That's awesome. That's definitely what's going to start your addiction. All right, it's definitely what's going to start. You get it. You you like the way it plays, and then you find out. Oh, I can make my own. Oh, there's different types of buttons. There's like like right now I'm on these crown. These Sandusker Crown uh, 302Bs, if I'm not mistaken, that's the uh, model of them. And they have uh, Cherry MX switches inside of them. So they're a little bit... You know, just, I know, right? That's so cool. Like, the fact that you can swap out the in the insides with the uh, with different switches uh, that, that, that take different weights to activate them. And I was noticing that I was... Do I have these big, dumb American hands, right, that just slap everything. They don't. They're they're not gentle on any button. And I was noticing that I was going through these Sanwa buttons, these OBS buttons, left and right, dude, because I'm just whacking the hell out of them. And on top of that, I was getting missed inputs. Like I was accidentally touching a button that would trigger an action, and it was messing up my combos. Uh, th this especially in Imbon because it's um, it was such a it's, it's a limited thing. You have four buttons that you use uh, as opposed to your, the normal six that you would have in a fighting game and now eight with your macros and things of that nature. Uh, I was noticing that I was touching buttons that I shouldn't be touching swapped to these buttons where they take a little bit more force to connect. And that was kind of an eye-opening experience. Now, I'll go back and I'll play Street Fighter with these buttons and I'm like, oh, no, 
okay, I miss my Sanwas now. I miss the touch. I miss the little touch that, that goes into double tapping a combo or something like that. Uh, so now I have three sticks in rotation. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm telling you, dude, like if you get into fight sticks, man, get ready because you're going to be into them. I can tell by the personality. I can tell already. You'll be like, now I've got, um, th- welcome to uh, the stick podcast. I now have 12 arcade <laughs> sticks that I have built uh, and kitted out. And we're going to go through every single one of them today, boys. Man, uh, Gunpla's been uh, trying to strangle my wallet live already. So, Dude, yeah. brother, it's a constant battle. What am I going to spend money on? Uh, arcade uh, stick parts or Gunpla? And you're absolutely right, dude. Gunpla has been rushing it for the past let's just say the past three years every release has been something worth looking at getting if not picking up absolutely right um completely with you um for me it's always a matter of what what am i what am i getting right uh, i know i'm getting something with every p band i drop and i'm, I'm a big p band i fan i know a lot of people kind of scoff at the idea of waiting you know, six to seven months to get what you purchased, but the quality that they've been pumping out as of late has been absolutely wonderful. Uh, the, the, oh man, is it the F93? That was, I think it was one of the first units that was, that I purchased that was from the ground up a brand new unit. Um, and I was like, oh wow, this is what premium Bandai should be. And then the Mark V comes out, uh, uh, last year, year before last, or something like that, if I'm not mistaken, and I, I, again, a brand new design from the from the ground up. And man, I'm telling you, if if you've turned, if you've scoffed at P Bandai at any point, you should definitely reconsider at this point. Like you got to reconsider there because there's not a single Pell Rider that you can get uh, in high grade format that's not premium Bandai. And if you don't have a Pell Rider in your collection, well, now's the time to get one. Yeah, the main reason you have so I'm, many to choose from. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of scoffing at P Bandai because they can don't ship to my place, so. <laughs> oh no, P Bandai! What's wrong with you? <laughs> get on the ball, dude. Do you ever do you ever have to order from like a uh, like a third party? Do you get some like third party sellers or anything like that? Nah, I just kind of gave up on it. I mean, if there's uh, oh no, if there's some cool new stuff, yeah, I guess I'll kit bash it or something. Oh hell yeah! Oh, of course, dude. If you're if you're an experienced modeler and you've got what it takes to scratch build something or to kit bash it together, dude, it's it. You're really not too limited at that point, right? Um, but for guys that just want to get something for the uh, the alternate color, the, the the alternate color schemes and things of that nature, just get learn to paint. It's the most rewarding thing in all of modeling, in my in my opinion. The next thing would be learning how to uh, scribe. Scribing can really take your models to the next level, and uh, learning to do it is—it's uh, a bit taxing. It can be nerve-wracking and scary. You don't want to go into and start cutting up your favorite model, right? So you, you need to get you uh, something you don't mind to mess up, of course. But learning how to cut your own panel lines, uh, learning how to paint—those uh, th- two things right there—you can take regular release kits and turn them into something your own and that's why my favorite gumpla always my favorite gumpla of all time is the gym sniper 2 and everybody's like, it's so plain it's so it's it's there's nothing special about it and then uh, you, you, as somebody has probably have, have you built the gym sniper 2 not yet okay well take it take it from me the articulation on the suit is out of this world yeah, I've seen um, some builds. And it's it, and, and it, uh, if I may interrupt you for a second, uh, please, please, please. Oh sure. Uh, so if I may go back to the to the thing we have uh, been an experienced builder. I'm not an experienced builder. However, I am foolish enough to just go for it. And yeah, that's how I would describe. Or bold. I yeah, mean, no, 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 no. Yeah, You're not foolish. You're bold, my friend. Yeah. I, Whenever I wing it, at first I label it as folly or stuff like that, and yeah. then I look at it and it's, it's like, damn, I think I've tried something new and it works. 
and nothing feels better than that, dude. It's like landing a combo. It's like it's like like the, that combo you've been labbing out yeah, uh, know, right? the past two weeks. And then and like you look and you finally get it. You look at those panel lines that you've described and you're like, I did it. Oh, man, I did it. And it was nerve wracking. It was scary. You didn't want to mess up or anything like that. And then you pull it back and, and you look and you're like, I did that. This is mine now. This is nobody else's. That's the beauty of Gunpla. Like once you start doing things like that, that's the freedom that gunpla really gives you and you go and you show that online or you show it to your uh fellow builders the the friends that you build with and everything like that whether they be next door or they be you know uh across the pond a uh, complete and total continent over the, the enjoyment that that you get out of that stuff is just nothing else touches it uh for me anyway i'm sure that somebody's out there like well i crochet and you know and i do the same thing and i'm like yeah no no i totally understand what you're coming from there where, where you're coming from there because nothing's more badass than showing your friends something that you scratch built or that you uh customized and them going wow dude you nailed that shit. you knocked that out of the park man and then the another beautiful thing is is like when you show it to them they're like okay look man i noticed a little bit of this this and this if you if you went at it from this direction we can make that even better so it's it's nothing but constructive everything inside this community yeah, I did right. not know that you were that, that you went willy nilly in and just started scribing things. The balls on you, lad. Yeah, I had uh, you know the entry grades, so those are kind of dirt cheap at the moment, and uh, yeah, therefore and I was like, you know, if I miss up, I'll just you know maybe I'll send it, maybe I'll be like, you know, this line was there already. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, well, you broke this, man. Um, and yeah, no, those were great ones to start with, right? Um, I was super stoked when the entry grade line came out because number one, holy damn, they are so good. Like, you know, like for being eleven bucks or nine bucks or whatever, whatever you're paying for them, right? You're not paying more than fifteen dollars uh, unless you absolutely got to have it that day. It was um, like four fifty on Hobby Link, which was exactly. Uh, you know, it is, and then they're good. They're not just these. I was expecting them to be no grade nineteen ninety four level model kits dude and they're not it's almost like what high grade used to be and then you see these new high grades that are coming out and they're almost of course they're not the the, the part separation is not there but it's it's the detail is that of like old high grade i mean old real grades excuse me um the 144 market is on fire right now you'd be hard pressed to show me anything that's being released in the past five years that i wouldn't say it's uh if you find it buy it i'm not going to tell you not to get anything at this point there used to be things where i'd be like stay away from all early real grades uh which there's a caveat the caveat to that is the mark ii uh hands down and then if i'm not mistaken when the sazabi and the new came out real grade rounded a massive corner and then every single drop after that was better than the next um I think my favorite my favorite real grade of all time is the Mark II, uh, just because it was the it was the little engine that could, uh, if, because everything else was just so bad that uh, the MS joint dude, uh, great idea in theory, and in this in practice did not work out too well. But you get something like the Mark II, and it shows you um, amazing. It looks beautiful, especially in the Titans colors. I think it looks so good with with the Titans uh, colorway on it. But that showed me right there, hey, there's something to this line uh, of Gumpla, and then more turds came out. But then this, the the beauty that was the new and the Sazabi that led into the uh, the wonderful piece of uh, uh, engineering that was the uh, the crossbone real grade. So small and finger cramping, don't get me wrong. But man, all that detail in such a small piece completely different than anything else in the line and looked just as beautiful as the as the previous the, the past couple of iterations then you get into uh the one of the most recent drops was the high new and it blew me away it's my favorite model kit ever at this point um uh, 144 being my uh favorite scale to build models in 1100 is cool don't get me wrong bigger in most cases, is always better. They're also much easier to build because they're not so small, uh, not so finger cramping. Um, but at, ever since the the new and the Sazabi real grade has just held my attention at 
every at every release. Uh, like I just got the uh, the God Gundam, the real great God Gundam, out of my backlog because I've not, I've still haven't got a chance to snap this thing together. And I, I've looked at it over the course of the past week. Like when's going? When's the moment? When do I bust this thing out and throw myself into it? Because after I knew, I I knew that the next release was going to beat this thing out. Um, I, I don't know if I'm going to feel that way about the real great God, but I finally put the damn thing together. But looking at it right now, if it has all that articulation and it has all that pliability, super stoked for it. Ooh, sweet. Um, oh, and another thing, the, uh, the, the, the real grades that we haven't got and should have, like the G self and things of that nature, uh, speed up this process. Dadgummit. <laughs> let's get, let's get some more real grades out per year. Yeah, I wish there was stuff like real grade goof or I don't know. Let me see. Real grade gym. Yeah. Why is that not a thing? I'm with you. Real grade grunts is an awesome idea. Hell yeah. Real grade Giradoga. Oh, bro. One trillion. I had to do a real grade Garazulu, bro. Oh, <laughs> yes. So, guys, I, mean, I guess the thing, right? Like, if you put out, if you had a, uh, if you had, um, a real great gym line. You know, Premium Bandai, take this idea for free. It's yours. Make expansions where we can change them out, and you can just keep taking our money. We don't care. Just give it to us. Because <laughs> like you could have like a real great like. Look, man, I got a a real great gym, and it's cool. Like, it looks great when you put it together. And then they drop a, a a gym guard custom expansion pack for it on Premium Bandai. You're like, oh shit! Now I gotta go buy another. Now I gotta go buy another gym so I can get this expansion, and then. They drop a uh, uh, a Night Seeker expansion. You're like, oh man, I gotta go get another one and put this together. That'd be so great. Yeah, it's getting my my Vordrin. So yeah, let me probably sidetrack into something before I eventually end up drooling over my keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was curious. Oh. Uh, about your early days as Papanik, you know, with the whole, uh, you know, kind of before the Max Boost. Were you doing the streaming thing back in the day before that? I absolutely was. Um, I, be I believe, uh, so I downloaded OBS to help me record. Um, I, I wanted to get into podcasting. And I realized very quick that podcasting is not as simple as just hitting record, right? And... I kind of put it on the back burner. I was like, okay, I'm not that, I'm not that good at this yet. Uh, I'll keep, I'll keep learning and this, that, and the third. And during my time, uh, trying to learn how to podcast, um, I realized that I was, Hey man, you know what? You're pretty good at having the, your friends in your party laugh. And there's this new thing that just came around where people are streaming, live streaming themselves, playing video games. I think you should give it a shot. And, I gave it a shot and I didn't get a lot of uh, traction at it, but there was something that just intrigued me so much of making this broadcast, like a, almost like a television show. Um, I wanted it to be as, as good looking as possible and I wanted it to sound good first and foremost. Um, and in doing that, it just became, it became such a, uh, such an, uh, an addiction almost, like, not an addiction, a passion where I was able to add my knowledge of audio. Like I said, I, was, I grew up recording, writing and recording music. Very mu musically inclined family. Um, I grew up writing and recording music, so I already had an idea of audio. And video was the next thing that really caught my attention. And, 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 and I, I, went, I went at it with a fervor like I had for audio. And I just I loved it. Uh, and in the beginning, I was a variety streamer. I played... Uh, multiple games and it did very well i remember i found my footing on uh, facebook gaming and uh, i developed a nice little community around me uh there and uh, the platform just wasn't up to snuff at this point but i but i thugged it out for about for about a year or two and uh i really enjoyed myself i really enjoyed um making the connections with people because number one thing that i've always wanted to be is an entertainer uh whether it be a a musician, a professional wrestler, uh, uh, just the, be getting the um, 
getting the reactions from uh, somebody when you're really entertaining them, making them laugh, um, making somebody's day better uh, to, to just by performing for them. That's always been something that I've enjoyed uh, the thought of. So once I realized that li like I was getting pretty good at doing that in, in my live streams and I was uh, the, the BDE gaming at this point, um, I had gotten pretty decent at, at keeping people's attention. And I, I knew that as long as I kept doing this, I was going to get sharper at it. I was going to get better at um, playing the game, managing a stream, and managing the chat at the same time. Uh, the chat is always something that really meant something to me. Like when people would react, good or bad, right? Good or bad. I, I wanted the reactions. And. I finally made my way to uh, streaming Overwatch pretty regularly. And that's really where I found the competitive side of everything. Um, I did, I tried to stream fighting games because that's where, you know, I, my love was. But I just, there was no traction for me at that point in time. So I was bouncing around trying to find out where I fit in. Um, and to be perfectly honest with you, I still don't think I found that, but we're still bouncing around trying to find out where I fit in. And my wife saw the first check that we received uh, from Facebook Gaming. And it was a substantial, we had gotten a substantial uh, bit of traction that month. And once my wife was behind me to keep this up, there was no going back. Like I, 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 got, I had the support of uh, the most important person in my life at, uh, but at that point before before we had uh, our child and everything like that. Um, had the support of her, and she thought it was great, and she thought I was good at it. And once I heard that, I was like, okay, well, this is what I do now. Uh, and I'll be doing this forever. Like, if it's five people, if it's 5,000 people, I'll be doing this forever just because of how much I, I truly enjoy uh, performing. And, you know, I'm 30 years old and the idea of getting a band together at 30 years old and trying to, you know, tour or anything like that, especially at this point with my family and all that stuff, it's kind of not there. Uh, it's not an option for me. But getting better at performing in a live stream format absolutely is. So it keeps that hope of uh, that, that, that passion of being a performer alive. Um, so to round it all up, yeah, I started uh, uh, when I, I started and I was bad. I was bad at it. My quality was not good. Um, I, was, I didn't understand what a bit rate was. I didn't understand what network settings were. I didn't get how to uh, split audio channels and things of that nature. But over time, you know, I, I got the hang of it. And now if you look at my live streams, I feel like you can look at them and be like, oh, yeah, no, this guy knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. Uh, it looks good. It sounds good. Sometimes he gets a little, uh, he gets a little, uh, but harry and the things that he does he might put a little bit too much into this or a little bit too much in that but overall i feel like if you looked at it you can tell that i give a damn about what your what your eyes and ears are going to go through to watch me play a game yeah i can relate i mean i do like quite a lot of uh speaking skills so you know the short time i did uh stream on twitch yeah i enjoyed that but i don't think that was like probably me at my best I mean, my, my element is probably just the scripted videos because I can hide, I can hide my stutters far more easily and, uh, you know, and there ain't, uh, like chunks of dead air when, uh, when my brain tries to, you know, scramble and get a new thought to oh. bounce off of. Yeah, but absolutely baby i know exactly what you're talking about. You, the, the thing for like the, the speaking skill like i prefer like i really enjoy doing the scripted videos as well i think that that's really cool too it's another way to highlight other parts other pieces of your personality uh but the speaking skills that I, the uh, and thank you by the way for um for, for the compliment uh the, the the reason that i feel like i have such good speaking skills um is because is my love of professional wrestling. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I, that was my main goal in life was to grow up and be a professional wrestler. I have the mic skills to do this. Uh, I've, I've always wanted to do it. So I practiced cutting promos my entire life. You know, what you going to do, brother? And like things like that. Um, 
and it just you do that so much with your friends and it's for fun and laughs and stuff like that that it almost becomes something like Im- like improv comedy right like like you you've be- I do this with my buddies all the time and it becomes almost like we're an improv troupe but we're just you know cutting promos on each other trying to get a laugh out of one another and when you come across a word and like like you stumble or you trip or what have you, you've done this so many times that you've got so many different things that you can plug in, and 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 it might not even be worth it. it, it it's just something to stop the the drop, right? Uh, because the next thing that you say is what you want them to pay attention to. So you just put a little something right there that people might look at and be like, "What the hell?" But like, it's the next things after it that take their attention from it. That you learn that that's that's probably the best way to make a live promo, something that you're, uh, something that you're saying without a script, but you have a pretty good idea where you're going with it. And I've practiced that so much, so much throughout my entire life that it's just it's translated over into live stream very well, might I add. Like it's it, that that was a skill that just I didn't even know that I had, and it 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 does it translates very very well into doing live entertainment. Great. I mean, uh, what uh, eventually pushed me to go on a little hiatus on Twitch was uh, probably well, kind of the schedule change uh, in my IRL, you know, end of things. Yeah. So, yeah, I couldn't uh, just uh, try doing uh, like Gundam versus Ada Gundam marathons and mm-hmm. stuff like that for a while, and. Uh, yeah, then I felt like uh, expanding the backlog of the channel, and oh, know, dude, it I kind think of fell by wonderful. the wayside. Yeah. No, 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 no! It got put on the bag burner. It got yeah, put on the, the bag burner. burner. Man, That's I love it, dude. Using like that word. I love using it as well because let me tell you right now, dude. When you think that we're not doing something, we're up to everything. Don't ever think that we're resting on our laurels. No, 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 sir, not us. We're back here getting better and more equipped every single day to deliver what we do in the best possible way. So don't think that we're sleeping. Sleep, we'll do that when we're dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Where'd you get those, like, speeches like that? Yeah. I'm telling, dude, watching Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, watching those guys and thinking, God, I know that there's people looking at it like, those guys are idiots, but I'm looking at them starry eyed, just like, wow, these guys are so cool. Man, I never knew I needed wrestling in my life. I'm telling you, man, there's so many people out there that don't know that they don't know that you need wrestling in your life. You should give it a, you should give it an honest chance. <laughs> You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Plus, I mean, I guess girls like it. There's girls in the crowd, so and it's probably got nothing to do with the muscular, you know, half naked men in the ring. And that's got nothing to do with why I watch it either. I'm not I, I fucking don't. <laughs> Yeah, you watch it for the plot. That's it. I watch it for the story. I watch it for the story. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> oh shoot. It's like I read Playboy for the articles. I just read it for the articles. I don't, I don't do anything else. Oh, uh, you also mentioned uh, at some point uh, that you're big into graphical design. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it was. Um, it's kind of been a passion of mine ever since I was in bands. Um, just because we didn't have the funds to get somebody to do our artwork for us or anything like that. And, you know, I was already recording our music and recording it poorly, might I add. But I was the guy at, in front of a... I was our guy in a chair. Um, I was in front of the computer learning how to do everything that we needed to do to have a media kit. And the execution wasn't there in the beginning. It wasn't there at all, right? But it was like you could see the uh, the knowledge was starting to grow. Um, and then eventually I started to take, I took a couple of classes into design and started to understand color theory and things of that nature, which then applied wonderfully into uh, Gumpla and modeling. Um but I, when I would show it to my friends, they would be like, wow, dude, hey, you're getting better at this. And I'm a sucker for a compliment. Like the second that somebody uh, says, hey, you're doing good. I'm like, oh, cool. And then maybe I, sh- I could do even better next time I show you something. And it just like it, I'm, I'm a weird guy where the compliments definitely fire me up. But then the negativity will also fire me up. Uh, I don't I don't want to be negative towards anybody. I try, I try my best not to be uh, rude or 
across anyone that's trying to to to, to get their shit together uh, to for lack of a better term yeah. um <laughs> they should be they, they should be encouraged right but when i hear that negative stuff that hits me in my ear it makes me like i'll show you i'll show you buddy um and that's kind of how my design uh my graphical my graphic design uh career so to speak kind of took off uh at this point you know i'm credited for doing a bunch of artwork for different bands uh different brands different uh businesses a local and abroad um i'm kind of proud of what i was able to do e even though my, my classes were necessarily just going over things that i had learned on my own like i'm completely and totally self-taught um, and by self-taught, I mean the great people who put tutorials on YouTube and on Reddit, uh, anything like Googling things to figure it out, like as a skill and I've, and I've, and I've honed it very well. Um, but I wanted a piece of paper that said, this guy knows how to do this for sure. He's not lying on his resume. He's not lying. Uh, that this is his portfolio. You know, he's not full of shit. And I went to school, uh, for graphic design and again it was just everything that i'd already knew and i remember my teachers tell coming up to me about three weeks in and he's like yeah, you already know how to do all this stuff and i'm like yeah 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 uh, but i need you to sign off on me knowing how to do it because i want to do that i want to make this my career and uh he's like no problem great you got any questions you know i'm here to do that i'm here to teach like, wonderful uh ended up developing a relationship with that uh with the teacher uh which was pretty cool you know what i mean so like i could show him things like i'm hey i'm trying to do this I'm not quite sure how to how to uh pull it off and that was the the most learning that i got was actually one-on-one -on -one time with my teacher being like hey so you know i already know how to do all this stuff right and i, I know how to do it pretty well can i ask you about things that i don't know and uh, anytime that I would get stumped in a project or anything like that, I could take it directly to him and him show me his way of doing it. And after learning his way, I was able to kind of mold it into my own way of pulling it off. Because if you look at the way that I, if you look at any designer, uh, even though that they may have um, classic, be classically trained and they know how to uh, pull themselves out of it, it's really hard to pull yourself out of it completely. Uh, so there's, there's certain designers out there that I can look at their, their work before I even know who's put it, this together. I know who's done it because it's really, really hard to completely remove yourself from a project. And it, especially if you look at mine, there's certainly, a, uh, inspirations there that you can pick from <laughs> and being, uh, like I said, being the only guy in our band that really knew how to use a computer. And we needed flyers, we needed album art, we needed merch art, we needed things like that for us to be taken seriously uh, going up and down the southeast and eventually all across America. Um, we needed that and we didn't have the money to facilitate buying it. Uh, and that's really what launched me into doing it because I was like, we need it, uh, we need it now, or actually we needed it yesterday and I'm going to do my best and since none of you guys know how to do it, uh, you can't tell me no. So that's uh, that's kind of how uh, the designing things, like all the things in in my live streams and things of that, they have my hands all over it. Um, uh, sound design uh, as well for the for the live stream, that's all mine. It's all me. Um, and it and it makes me I'm proud of it. Like like I could definitely you know there there's wonderful people out there that sell uh, all these assets. That, that really work hard to make it easier for guys that, that have a vision and they, they may ne not necessarily have the uh, the tools in their uh, toolkit to, um, to make it a reality. What I like to do is, is to make something completely in-house, something all my own. Um, and that's what makes me so proud of uh, the, the, the media that I put out. Uh, even in my scripted videos, uh, you know, most of the music that you hear inside of those videos is all written and recorded by myself. Um, if you uh, and the script is uh, it's you're probably familiar with doing something like this as well. Like you'll sit down and you'll write these little guidelines for your script. And uh, the, the best parts is where you go off the rails a bit. Um, I've always enjoyed doing that, but I always wonder what it would be like working with a writer. You know what I mean? Like, I've always wondered, what would that be like if somebody wrote? for Papa Nick, as opposed to me just doing this all my, on my own. I always wondered what it would be like if somebody else took a stab at guiding me through being that character. That's 
That's impressive. When I'm on the casual end of things when it comes to doodles, uh, look, give me a second, I'll, uh, I'll send you st the stuff I've doodled. Like, for example, the things that you sent me, it was uh, so good. Like, it's so good where you could see, like, like if you if you took the time out to, to, to break all these assets down and to really chisel them out and make them fine pieces of digital artwork, it's totally there, dude. Yeah, like, uh, I do things, uh, like, predominantly on PC and paint. Like, I can send you, like, the thing I did. Like, I doodled the uh, whole as M14 and oh, dude. MS Paint. And even the dis disassembled one. No, uh, oh, that's the file right next you to You didn't send paint? Oh, my God. <laughs> yep. All I had to do was to... You know, all I needed to do was to get a get a proper uh, how's it called? Yeah, uh, all I needed was a reference image, and uh, then I just spend uh, some time in, on the on the whole uh, trigger group, which is on the disassembled uh, picture. I've spent like 40 minutes just using various screenshots and references to recreate those parts. Yeah, yeah, this looks like a this looks like an owner's manual. This is like something that you would you would open up and learn how to deassemble your your M1. You know what I mean? Like this is uh yeah. th this is really really cool. But where I truly shine is when I doodle with uh, the mechanical pencils. Like uh, you know, it lets me it lets me uh, shade and uh, color things uh, easier. Sick. Like uh. You know, with the normal pencils, you've got uh, a set uh, toughness of the and of the you know uh, pointy thing that makes the lines, <laughs> right? Oh yeah. And uh, you know, sometimes it has uh, certain limitations that kind of hinder me. But when I when it comes to mechanical pencils, I just I just get a better feel for it. Like, I'm I'm a I'm right there with you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, I'm I'm right there with you. First of all, this Efrit looks sick as hell. Uh, I've been uh, so so a lot of times like when it, like you'll see um, so some of the, uh, the the artwork that I've done, I will draw this all out on paper, and then I'll take a picture of it, and then I'll take that into uh, Procreate, and I'll use that. The Procreate has been a godsend. I've absolutely loved this program. Um, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with the entire Adobe suite, but I typically really like using Procreate on my iPad with the little Apple Pencil uh, to, to, to recreate the things that I drew on paper and bringing it to the digital realm. Uh, learning how to use the Apple Pencil was hell because I just, it wasn't like using a mechanical pencil. It wasn't like using, uh, it was similar, it was so close, but it was almost like uh, uncanny. Uh, that would be the word that I think could describe it the most. And learning how to re to, to set your uh, your brushes up and your pens up and things of that nature really helped me evolve as a as a graphical designer. As a graphic, I, I just usually call it a digital artist. Like it really helped me uh, take my shit to the next level. And there's like I don't know, like another 250 levels for me to continue to to try to get to. But it's like it's like it seems like any time I discover a new tool, I have to learn. I have to learn it. I have to try to my best to not necessarily master it, but at the very least know how to use it. Yep, I've uh, tried uh, using the that pencil as well. Like my sister's mm -hmm. got a drawing tablet, right? And uh, it just for I don't know. Like one day she was like. You know, uh, you wanna try drawing something, and uh, you know it's it it just doesn't feel right when I draw and it the line just uh, you know drawing things like that. It feels very uncanny to me, and yeah, I can't uh, get used to it for the time being. So you know, all I'm currently using is the roster of MS Paint, mechanical pencil. And sometimes a pen. Well, look, 
you've definitely got a knack for this. Like it looks, you definitely have a knack for it. When when you get that pencil down, walk, look out, boys, look out, boys, because man, you can tell just by the things you're able to do on paper that they would translate so well to the digi the digital realm. You would, it's just a lot of talent there, sure, a lot of talent there, brother. Yep, man. I wish I knew how to, you know, get into that. But for the time being, I guess I'll just try iron iron out what I have, and maybe, maybe when I get good enough, maybe I'll kind of branch out. Hey, that's the that's the one thing that I always say to remain positive. Never put yourself back. Be like I just ain't done it yet. Yep. I always say you ain't done it yet, and um, uh, positivity is a it's a, it's it's addicting, like, and it's contagious, right? Uh, so I so I try to uh, do my absolute best to give a little piece of that in every single thing that I do. Sometimes it can be annoying, right? Like, stop being so positive. This is bad. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I can't. This is what I know how to do. Uh, spreading that positive, that that positive nature is hyper, hyper important to me. Yeah. I see. So anytime that you show me anything, just be prepared to just get. But so much compliments that you'll be sick of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. And, uh, yeah, when, when it comes to compliments, uh, I have a strong feeling that I should compliment your uh, beautiful, beautiful stick art. Like, oh, you, yes. you like that, don't you? You like the Super girls, don't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, um, if you ever, if, if like anybody, if you haven't seen my live stream, um, it's a link in the description. Um, <laughs> if you've never seen it, you know how nasty uh, some of us can be. And it, 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 we, we love the waifus. Yeah. And I wanted to illustrate that. Uh, I love the waifus that are just as much as anybody. And I wanted to illustrate that with the <laughs> stick art that I used for Embon. It's a lot of BD1 in there. And then the rest of it is just girls. Just DNA, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, it's su such a part of my personality. And, like, it, it's it's okay for that. You're a man, right? You're a man. Yeah, I'm a man. You, gotta, you gotta control it. You know what I mean? You gotta keep that contained. But inside of where we're playing, where we're hanging out, it's okay to be a little bit of a perv sometimes. <laughs> all right. It's okay. Yeah. So I want to, like, that, that being part of my, uh, I don't want to say character because it's part of my personality as well. Don't worry. I know how to not do this type of shit in public, guys. But um, <laughs> I wanted people to see that and be like, of course, that's what his stick art is. Of course, that's what he would do. <laughs> of course, he's a little bit pervy. But <laughs> I'm like, damn it. So are you guys. <laughs> uh, man, you got great taste. Exactly. I wanted to illustrate my wonderful taste. And there's a little bit of something for everybody in there, dude. Yeah, so closing thoughts. Um, you got any more topics? Dude, the one thing that, um, if I, if <sighs> closing, as long as we've, as long as, hmm, we covered Inbon, we covered my live streaming, we covered, uh, uh, my design and everything like that. And I'm so glad that you had me on to be able to talk about it. Dude, I'm really, really, really honored that you would want to even hear about any of this stuff. But um, uh, if there's anything that I would like to close on, it's that if you're if you if you're currently into Gundam, good, stay there. You understand what it takes to uh, you understand the 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 depth of the community and the depth of the lore and the depth of the intellectual property. You understand that. But if you haven't, dip your toes into it and understand that there's something here for everyone. There's something here for um the wild child madman who just wants to see nothing but nonstop action all the way down to the person that's just a really rooted in dramatics uh, or the stage and other uh, classical forms of media. Uh, Gundam has been, Gundam has pulled me out of some of the most depressing times in my life and has inflated the most positive times in my life. It's something that I love so very, very much. And I, and, I, and I only wish to share that with other people. Uh, if, if, if you haven't gotten the opportunity to really engross yourself in all the parts 
that make up the Gundam community, I highly suggest that you give it a shot. Not just because it's got cool robots and stuff like that in it, but because it's got tons of cool people. Well spoken. So, yeah, man, uh, I appreciate the amount of work you do on and off streams and with all those illustrations, sound alerts, etc. Man, they're, they're breathtaking. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you being here. And uh, I guess that's it for the for the thing. So yeah, I'm queuing the outro. Shirtlet signing out. Okay, go for it. What's your outro? Oh, uh, uh, my outro is uh, keep shaking it, boys. Shirt, thank you very very much for having me on. Catch me at uh, Twitch.tv backslash x Papa Nick x for Mecha Fight Club other fighting games and other just rad times hey shirt will probably be there as well so you already have a friend in the lobby and now you have two friends in the lobby guys shirt thank you so much for everything that you do brother and i'll catch you guys on the flip